Hello friends, it's Shan here. Welcome or welcome back to Golf with Shan. I do have a few more videos from our most recent trip to Asia, but I did want to cap off the Thailand portion of our trip with today's video, which is actually a frequently requested video. I've gotten a lot of questions about our experience with them, what I thought, whether it was worth it or not. So today's video is everything you need to know about our experience with Golf Asian. This video is not sponsored. We paid out of pocket. Golf Asian doesn't know I'm making this video. You may or may not have a completely different experience to us, or you may have a very similar experience. I would personally say they're probably pretty consistent. Without further ado, let's get started. As usual, timestamps will be linked down below in the description section, along with all the website links and anything I mention in this video. And if I don't answer that question in the video, make sure to leave it in the comments down below, and I will do my best to answer all the questions. If I don't know the answer then I'm sorry I am not a travel agent I am just a person sharing my personal experience and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please consider subscribing I make a lot of travel and golf content for you all year round every Saturday so yeah I hope to see you on my channel and let's get started golf Asian is a golf travel agency based in Bangkok Thailand they offer golf and hotel stay transportation kind of all-inclusive golf travel packages across Thailand all of the golf regions in Thailand and some other countries in Southeast Asia. So off the bat, if you want like a worry-free, stress-free, everything is planned out for you kind of vacation golf experience, then I would highly recommend checking out Golf Asian. But this video isn't me trying to sell you guys on Golf Asian. This is just, we use them, and here's our experience. So we're gonna start off with talking about booking. I have my laptop here because there's a few details I don't wanna miss. Starting off with booking, here's how we did it. So firstly, we went on Golf Asian website and when you get to their homepage, you will see Asia's best golf holidays and it will have all of these golf regions. So these are different golf regions across Southeast Asia that they offer packages for. What we did was we wanted to go to Pattaya so we basically clicked on the, the Pattaya Golf Packages link and then it'll lead you to a separate page that has a bunch of different pre-made golf packages that they have on their website. We picked one that sounded closest to what we wanted. So we were there for a week. We wanted to play four rounds of golf um, and we actually found one that was five rounds of golf for one week. And we basically clicked on to that package that we think is the closest to what we wanted. And we scrolled down and clicked on interested, request a free non-obligatory quote. And this essentially emails someone from Golf Asian. This is where we filled out our information and just said, hey, you know, two people looking to golf in Pattaya, Thailand for a week in April, da da da, please help us. <laughs> They were able to get back to us pretty quickly. Now there is a time difference, so just be aware of that. They're obviously gonna reply during the workday in Thailand, which is going to be in the evening here in Toronto. And depending on where you are, just be aware of the time difference. From then, we were able to customize the itinerary that we initially asked from if that makes sense. The itinerary that we asked for had five rounds of golf. Um, we were gonna go to Bangkok during Songkran, which is a national holiday. It is, I think, their New Year's. It's where they have the big water fights, the water guns on the streets, lots of parties. It's supposed to symbolize washing away the negativity from the previous year, which I just think is a beautiful tradition. Honestly, people come to Thailand from all over the world for Songkran. So long story short, we wanted to enjoy Songkran. We wanted to enjoy our weekend in Bangkok. We ended up deducting one golf course. We did play Nikanti, which is this video please go check it out. If you are at all interested in playing a golf course in Bangkok, I highly recommend Nikanti. When you get an email response from your initial request for a quote, you can communicate with this person about your specific travel itinerary. So this is a good thing that we actually found was the flexibility they had to help us. A few things you can swap out. First things is the golf courses. You can suggest a golf course and they can try to get you a tee time. If it's a really popular time of the year, it might be a little more difficult, but you can tell them if you wanna play early in the morning, if you would rather play midday or afternoon, what golf courses you're looking at. Obviously, there's gonna be a few popular ones. I honestly think all of them are worth your time. So it really just depends on what's available and what you're interested in. So golf is one thing you can customize. The second thing is they 
they will give you multiple options for hotels. Firstly, they'll ask you if you need to have a five star hotel or if you're okay with a four or five star, four star. I think they might have options for three stars or less, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys, Thailand is gonna be a lot more affordable in terms of hotels, especially if you're coming from North America or Europe. So I would stick with four stars or higher. You're gonna get a decent hotel room, great service. They will definitely have English and Wi-Fi. You're not gonna be disappointed. So basically we asked for four star because we're not really, like we don't really need a five star hotel. Four star is good enough. I would say if you are on a budget, go for a four star. If you don't have a budget, then go for the best five star hotel you can, I guess. <laughs> and then they will send you a couple options from which you can choose. So what we did was based on the hotel options we got back, we go on Google search, you go to reviews, you go to photos, and then you go to photos by visitors. Not the photos that the hotels take professionally, photos that your visitors take because those are gonna be more accurate. Make sure to read through the reviews, see if you like it. Don't get too boggled down by the negative reviews because I always think like if someone has the time to go on and put a really negative review and it's surrounded by a lot of good reviews, that person probably just had a unique bad experience and I wouldn't count too much on that. But if in general, a lot of people are saying this is a great hotel, you know, they are great to foreigners, they speak English, et cetera, et cetera. If they have everything you're looking for, then go for it. The other thing you can get customized is transportation. So you can tell them, for example, we don't need transportation from the airport. We don't need transportation to and from the golf courses. We would just like you to book the hotel and golf for us. They can do that for you and then they'll just adjust the quote for you. All right, so now that we've talked about the customization of the booking process, we've booked our trip and now let's talk about cost. So for us, we played four rounds of golf all hotel and all transportation included. This was so great. For us, it was one week, so we had a little more hotel stay than golf ratio than a lot of the packages. And it ended up being 33,600 Thai baht per person, which comes out to about 1,300 Canadian dollars per person. And that was for one week and four rounds of golf. The way the payment options work, on their website it says all of these, so all the major payment options like Visa, MasterCard, Amex, JCB, UnionPay, um, if there are other ones unique to your country, I'm sorry I don't really know about those, but those are the big ones that we use in North America and Asia, so those ones are all okay. How the payment works is first you pay a 25% first installment, so that is your down payment, and then closer to the trip, I don't know exactly what the dead dead deadline is for when you have to make the full payment. We just made it as soon as they sent out an email for the second payment because we knew we were going to go. Closer to your travel date, you will pay the second installment, which will just be the rest, the other 75%. All right, now let me share with you our day-to-day -day breakdown from our itinerary. Again, I have to reiterate, this is unique to what we did. You might have booked a completely different itinerary, but I think it might be fun for you guys to know. We got picked up in Bangkok at the airport. The guy had, or our driver, had a sign and he was able to help us with our luggage. We got our own car, drove us to our hotel, it was great. The drivers do speak English. The hotel we stayed at in Bangkok is called Park Plaza Bangkok Soy 18. And there we had a superior room. This hotel I honestly really enjoyed. I loved the location. The rooms were pretty nice. They were really clean. The hotel breakfast actually was pretty nice as well. We did see some families there. The hotel is kind of tucked away on a smaller street, so it wasn't super loud at all, but it was in such a good centralized location. It was close to some bars, close to a lot of street food, some of the malls as well, close to MRT, so you can you know easily just jump on their public transit system, or you can grab a taxi or a grab which is I think they're uber very convenient location if you do want to just golf and not explore the city center then I would suggest maybe staying at a hotel that's further out of the city because the golf courses are gonna be close to an hour outside of downtown um, especially with Bangkok traffic but if you did want to explore the city like we did especially because it was national holiday um, staying where we did on soy 18 it was perfect location, awesome hotel. I mean, it's not like blow your mind away hotel, but it was nice and clean. The service was really good. The 
people at the front desk were really nice, so no complaints. That's our hotel, so we did spend the weekend kind of just walking around Bangkok. We checked out some of the water fights. My boyfriend actually did go to a late night one on Khao Sun Road, and he said it was a little too busy this year. It was kind of like a mosh pit. I didn't go, that's not really my scene. I'm more of a daytime activities person, but he went and walked down the street, got completely soaked. It was fun, but it was just so jam-packed. But there are lots of videos on YouTube if you are interested. After spending the weekend in Bangkok, so much fun, lots of yummy food, we went to play Nikanti Golf Club. Oh my goodness. Nikanti is absolutely beautiful. Please go ahead and watch my golf vlog at Nikanti if you haven't already. And if you have and you just want a reminder, check it out, please. And if you are going to Bangkok to golf, don't skip on Nikanti, okay? I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. It's such a beautiful experience. In my Golf in Thailand playlist, I did play a few other golf courses in Bangkok from our previous trip. The ones that I would highly recommend, Suwon, 100%, Summit Windmill, 120%. Bring some extra golf balls because half the golf course is water, uh, but it's just so beautiful. Lots of palm trees. Tana City was really busy when we went, but people have said, if you just catch it on like a busy day, if you go on a different day, it's not as busy. So it really depends. Um, I would personally skip the Vintage Club. It felt, it's an old golf course, it's nice, but it just isn't that much of a wow factor, especially if you're on vacation. But yes, anyways, all of those golf courses will be in the Golf in Thailand playlist. Go ahead and check out the Bangkok ones if you are interested in golfing in Bangkok. While you're in Bangkok, feel free to check out my other Bangkok vlogs and things to do in Bangkok that we did last time. Um, the only thing I haven't gone to that I really want to go to is the Grand Palace. It just so happens, the last time we went was during APEC, so it was closed. This time we went, it was during the national holiday, so it's closed again. We'll see if third time's the charm. The next time I go, the Grand Palace will be open. <laughs> But that's the only thing I didn't get to see. Next up, we went to Pattaya. So with our itinerary, we actually got picked up from our hotel in Bangkok and we drove to our first golf course in Pattaya, which was Lam Chabang Golf Course. This was a Jack Nicklaus design, beautiful golf course, I have to say. There were a lot of those little flies. If you've watched my video, you'll know what I'm talking about, but the golf course is gorgeous, so many bunkers, I just, I can't. Because of how our itinerary was set up, we actually drove to the golf course, played golf first, and then checked into our hotel in Pattaya. So the hotel we stayed at in Pattaya is called Santara Azure Hotel Pattaya, and we got a deluxe room. I will say, I this is my first time in Pattaya, I didn't know really what to expect. It's a four star, it looked pretty good online. For us, it was very crammed. Basically, I didn't have many videos of it, but when you walk in, there's a separate little like closet thing where the toilet is in with a door that closes, and then your shower and sink is literally right next to your bed. Like the sink is a, like a arm's reach from your bed, and then the shower is right next to it, and it has two sliding glass doors that close like this. So if you leave the glass doors open, you're just showering pretty much right next to your bed. I think if we didn't have two golf bags and two golf travel cases with our suitcases in the room, it would have been okay because I'm not super picky with hotel rooms as long as it's clean. It is clean, I will give them that. But just space wise with our golf bags, we couldn't really walk around the bed, but the hotel was clean, the front desk did speak English, everything else was pretty good. Um, it was just It was just a little bit smaller than the hotels we had before in Bangkok, in Phuket, and yeah. I don't know if that's normal for Pattaya, that's, I have a sample size of one hotel room to tell you guys, so that's it. <laughs> I'm sure there are really nice hotels in Pattaya. Um, maybe we just picked a slightly smaller four star. <laughs> All right, and then our second round of golf in Thailand is the famous Buddha Mountain Chi Chan Golf Resort. I gotta tell you, I love this golf course. My boyfriend is one who likes it if the golf course feels a little more enclosed, if there's a lot of trees, it's very scenic. Personally, I like an open golf course. This is also why I loved Suwon and Summit Windmill in Bangkok. I love an open golf course. I love water. I think it's beautiful. 
I love the view of the mountains all around. So this golf course actually I probably enjoyed more than the Jack Nicklaus course and the CM Plantation course just because it felt more open. Um, but that's just a personal preference, honestly, depends on what you like. Because this course was more open, less trees, there weren't any of those little bugs. It was a little more windy as a result, um, but that actually just made it less hot. And then our final golf course that we played in Pattaya is the CM Country Club Plantation course in Pattaya. We played the tapioca and pineapple nine on the plantation course. People have said they enjoy the sugarcane nine. It really just depends. They assigned it to us, so we didn't really get to pick which nines we wanted to play, but I did really enjoy CM Country Club. So these, those were the three golf courses we played in Pattaya. Oh, one thing that we also knew, found out we didn't know is that after Songkran is done in Bangkok, it continues in Pattaya for another four days or so. Just because people in Pattaya like to party and honestly, good for them. Life is about being happy. We didn't know that we were going to Pattaya and Songkran was still happening. As we walked down the street, we would get soaked by water. That wasn't an issue the first few days, but on the final day, because our clothes wouldn't dry in our luggage and we had a flight, we didn't want to get wet. So after that, uh, we had another driver pick us up from our hotel in Pattaya and drive us back to the airport in Bangkok. And that is where we took off and left Thailand. So next up, here are some additional tips, tricks, information I think you need to know. I just have them jot down as a list. So here we go. First thing, bring or exchange some cash for tips. Through Golf Asian, the price you pay includes your greens fee, caddy, and cart. And so you don't actually have to pay anything when you get to the golf course. It's all pre-done for you. Really nice. However, caddy tips at the end of the round are separate. They are not included in your cost to play there. Please remember, if, especially if this is your first time golfing in Thailand, the tips are not gonna be really expensive like they are in the US. You are supposed to give them a tip at the end of the round. So the suggested amount, I believe, starts at 400 Thai baht per person. Um, but for the two of us, and because when we exchange cash, we get a lot of thousands, they just give you big bills. We just bring a thousand and we give that to both our caddies. So it splits to 500 each, which is about 20 Canadian dollars per person for, ti uh, for tips. When you're exchanging cash, just make sure you have a few thousands and prepare one for every round if you're two people. If you're one person, then maybe prepare a 500 or you know 400 or however much you wanna tip the caddy. Also have a few smaller bills, like 50, 100 for drivers. The other thing, now that we're speaking of drivers, I said they do speak English, but also the drivers do switch out. So you can ask your driver if they will be with you for just the one day or if they're gonna be with you for multiple days. So for example, our driver in Bangkok was with us for three days for our whole time in Bangkok. And then we had a different driver for every golf course in Pattaya. And we had a different driver from Pattaya back to the airport in Bangkok. Make sure you ask your driver. If they're with you for multiple days, you can tip them, I think, all together at the end, just for multiple days. And if they're just with you for one day, then you can give them a tip at the end of the day. It's a cultural difference. In Asia, if you don't tip, people aren't gonna roll their eyes. They're not gonna think you're weird or anything. The tipping culture is different, but it's still a good gesture. It kind of just is saying, thank you for driving us, you know? And I do appreciate that the culture there is based on whether you like their service and not you should tip them regardless of how they treated you. But I will say everyone in the service industry in Thailand, like all of our drivers, the hotel front desk, the cleaning people, everyone has been super nice. So I've never had a bad experience. The tipping culture difference, I just appreciate it more in Asia where it's they serve you well and you feel like it's good to give them a tip and make sure to ask what time you're gonna get picked up the next day. This kind of communication is very important. You can obviously contact Golf Asian and ask afterwards, but you can just ask the driver because they have all the schedules in like a little notebook. Next thing is to make sure for every round of golf to purchase a massive 1.5 liter bottle of water from 7-Eleven. I am one to chug water. I drink a lot of water, okay? 7-Elevens are wonderful in Thailand. They're not great here, but they're great over there. Next thing is to make sure you bring sunscreen. Sunscreen is also tends to be more expensive 
when you buy it there because they know they're selling it to foreigners. <laughs> just make sure since you have to check your golf bag anyways, bring it in your golf bag. And if you are not checking any luggage, then just bring you know less than 100 milliliter bottles. And the last thing, um, one of you guys mentioned the FootJoy rain grip gloves. Those are great. I personally don't have one right now. We got really lucky with weather that it didn't rain. Remember, you are going to a tropical weather location. It's likely that it might just downpour and then stop raining. You never know if that'll come into play. And if you've pre-booked your rounds like this, it's not as flexible and you do want to, you know, you've already paid for it. You want to play the golf course. That's just something to take note of. Make sure you bring extra golf balls. If you are going to Bangkok, I would recommend checking out the golf mall in Bangkok. It's a whole mall of just golf stuff and they even sell secondhand golf balls. If you do find yourself needing more golf balls or if you didn't want to carry too much for your flight, then you can go there and buy some golf balls and hopefully not hit them into the water. By the way, the slope on these golf courses are about 140 average, I would say. So not the easiest golf courses out there. Let's summarize the video because I've been talking for a while. <laughs> Was it worth it? Our first trip, we didn't use Golf Asian. We booked everything ourselves on Golf Savers and in Phuket, we rented a car. In Bangkok, we paid for transportation. This time we booked through Golf Asian and everything was taken care of. I would say it was worth it because it was stress-free. It was like everything was already done for us. When we got to the golf courses, we didn't have to check in. The driver would walk into the pro shop, walk out and just say, hey, I'm gonna wait over here in the shade. And we're like, okay. And then we just, you know, got ready and teed off. It was so simple. We didn't have to worry about anything from the second we landed in Bangkok to the second we left Bangkok. So from that perspective, it's worth it to pay for that convenience. And honestly, booking yourself, you're probably gonna end up paying a similar amount, except you have to do it all yourself. Obviously, there are cheaper ways to golf in Thailand, especially if you are local or you know the language or everything. Transportation is a big one. The first time when we were in Bangkok, we tried to get Grab. They rejected us because the golf courses were too far. We tried to get a taxi, they rejected us. But people have said if you're one person, you can probably get a grab or a taxi successfully and that's going to be a lot cheaper transportation wise. People have also mentioned golf bars where you can go get a good deal and also you know group up go to the golf course. So those are great options if you are more local to Thailand if you know where to go if you know what's up um, those are great options but if you're visiting for the first time if you just want a stress-free experience I highly recommend booking with Golf Asian. So yeah, I am going to conclude this video. I've been talking for a long time. I will link the Golf in Thailand playlist down below. I'll also add it to the end cards. So go ahead and check out that playlist. Check out the other golf courses we played. See for yourself if you are interested in playing a course, whether or not you like it. See the course layout. It's hole by hole every single shot. You'll get a pretty good sense of the golf course. Good luck on your next trip. If you've already taken a trip, let me know in the comments how you felt. If you've used Golf Asia, before let me know if you had a good experience if you didn't have a good experience we are here to provide information to help everyone out I am an advocate for golf travel go to the golf course but then also just explore the city explore the surrounding area have some local food have some food off the street it's honestly delicious and so cheap and enjoy your experience it's not just golf it's golf travel and with that, I want to thank everyone for watching this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in my next video. Bye. There is a cafe inside H&M. Quite possibly the nicest H&M I've ever been in. It's massive. <laughs>